that goes to my technology. Oh, still mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, okay. Okay, guess the man is, uh, is an internal combustion. It will generate, it will generate energy from the combustion chamber and force it to the turbine to produce a mechanical output. Gas turbine engine normally uh, that used in aviation industry uh, usually will be manufactured by several well-known companies like the Rolls Royce and General Electric (GE). This engine, uh, this technology, not only applies on aircraft but also used on cars and trains. Okay. The first, the first gas turbine technology was created by the hero, the Egyptian scientist from Alexandria and developed the first gas turbine engine theory in year 100 BC and it's known as Alpai. Alpai is consists of a kettle filled with water, spear and L shaped tube. When the kettle is heated, the fire, the thing will descend to the spear and escape through the L shaped tube. And it will rotate the Alpai. The Alpai, the purpose of it was invented is to open the temple door. Next, I will explain about the chimney jack. The chimney jack was designed by the Leonardo da Vinci in the year 1580. Uh, this device is using the <coughs> principle of expanding gases to move the mechanical part. Yes. And the, part, the last one is the John Barber's gas turbine. This device was invented by John Barbers in 1791, in the year 1791, and it contained a basic part of a modern gas turbine, such as a compressor, combustion chamber, and turbine. The main difference between the John Barber gas turbine and the modern gas turbine is the turbine and the compressor, because the turbine uh, was equipped with the chain driven. And the, we're using a, using a reciprocating type of compressor. I think that's all for me, and I will pass to my friends, Georgie. Good morning, everyone. My name is Georgie, and in the next couple of minutes, I'm going to start explaining basically how a gas turbine engine works. So, the gas turbine engine is a machine that burns fuel to provide thrust. Mm. There are four types of gas turbine engine. <coughs> The first one is a turbojet. Uh, it consists of uh, three main elements. As you can see here, we'll catch the compressors, uh, which the main task is to compress and heat air before entering the combustion <coughs> chamber. There are three compressors. Uh, first one is low pressure compressor. Then we have intermediate pressure compressor and uh, high pressure compressor. Uh, then all the air enters the combustion chamber uh, when it is uh, where it is being ignited and um, because of the explosion it expands and is later used to provide uh, uh, energy which spins the turbine over <coughs> the and then all the air uh, exhaust with a very high speed and actually it is providing thrust. The turbojet engine is uh, mostly used in uh, military aircraft uh, because of, uh, it's, um, it's very noisy and uh, not very fuel efficient to use in uh, commercial airliners. So, yeah, that's all for it. Uh, the next type of engine is a uh, turboprop. As you can see, we have almost the uh, same structure over here as the jet engine, but uh, you notice that there is a big propeller in front of the engine. Uh, in this type of engine, it's actually the uh, spinning of the propeller that makes the thrust, not the exhaust gases. Um, it works in absolutely the same way, uh, but we have a gearbox here, which uh, reduces the speed of the propeller better, because uh, it's most efficient to, uh, when it's spinning just below at uh, supersonic speed. Uh, it is used in a small aircraft, commercial, and not so much in uh, military.
Yeah, this is the through process, through process engine, sorry. Um, well, again, uh, we see almost the same structure. Uh, we have a the shaft here, which is now not connected to a propeller. It can be used to spin almost everything. Uh, in aviation, it's generally used in helicopters, and it has many industrial applications, such as uh, powering different kinds of pumps. <coughs> and this is uh, the turbofan engine. As you can see, uh, there is a slight difference here. Uh, there is the big fan in the front of the engine. And <coughs> also, the, one of the main differences is that it's not the, not the whole air that is being served is going to the combustion chamber. A uh, very big part of it, almost 80%, is going to the engine without entering, without combusting. So, actually, this 80% of air, which is called bypass air, they are generating the thrust. Uh, it is used in uh, commercial airliners because uh, it is very fuel efficient and uh, it's not so noisy. And I think that's all for me. I'm passing it on to my friend, Gilbert. Good morning, all. My name is Gilbert, and I will be talking about the improvements in gas turbine engines from time to time. So there are some general trends in the development of gas turbine engines. So now, compressors that come in less stages and pass, and the parts of the and the parts of the compressors are lower than the engines in in the earlier days. Fan blades are made of variable pitch designs and because of this they help producing reverse thrust for the braking of the aircraft. The combustion chamber and fuel nozzle design have been improved because they burn the fuel more cleanly and more efficiently. And more equipment has been used in the maintenance of the engine for testing the engine from from time to time. Now here's the difference between the first engine Rolls-Royce Conway and the latest engine Trent 900. Rolls-Royce Conway was the first turbofan engine. It was built in 1950s. It has some specifications like fan blades. The, uh, the diameter of the fan blades are 37.6 inches and it used to give a maximum thrust of and it used to give a maximum thrust of 17,000 LP. Whereas Trent 900 is the latest engine which is built in H380. It is used in H380 and it has a maximum uh, fan blade diameter of 117 inches, which makes it the largest turbo fan, uh, which makes it the largest turbo fan engine ever built. And it gives a maximum thrust of 70,000 to 80,000 LBs. Furthermore, Trent 900 is the only latest engine which has the standard built-in software for the monitoring of the engine. So that's it for me and this will be My name is and I'll be talking about the industrial application. And, uh, aviation is split into two sections, civil and military. <coughs> civil is basically for travel, comfort, and especially when you go on a holiday. And military is for, for combat. And the engine designs uh, reflect this by the military engines are pushed to their limit, where the civilian engines are high maintenance and uh, they're more for fuel saving and economy. And, uh, civil aviation has to comply with lots of regulations, like noise regulation. And one way of doing this is by new engines have, have developed chevrons, and this works by smoothing the mixing of the air. And yeah, the main benefit of this is to comply with the new regulations. And uh, the new turbine blades, there's, there's new uh, manufacturing process them. They're all casted <coughs> to mold of the blade, which they use over again. And it's, uh, they pour the material into that. The holes are actually filled for the casting process. And then drilled out afterwards. This is a uh, this is more cost effective, saves the company more money, and because of the new materials and the new manufacturing process, the blade actually lasts longer. 
<coughs> e top is the extended range twin engine operator performance standards. And this is basically how far away an aircraft can fly from an airport. So all, all the new engine manufacturers, they want to get their, they want to get their engine set <coughs> to the highest, to the highest amount of divergence limit. So this, the benefit of this is they can fly more direct routes than for example, when you go on a holiday, so they don't have to be 60 minutes away from an airport. They can fly more direct route and this saves time, it's going to save up to an hour on the journey time. And to get certified for a higher amount, for example, 240 minute diversion, the engine has to go through lots of tests. Um, to, for example, a two engine aircraft, the aircraft will fly on one engine or approximately three times the journey just to prove it can do it in an emergency. Um, so, my name is Jess, I'm going to talk to you about the future and what we're going to be looking at. Um, <coughs> I did the research based on the 2D manufacturers, uh, Rolls-Royce and GE. Uh, from Rolls-Royce we have the XYB which is 15% um, lighter than the standard Trent 900. Um, it offers a higher fuel, um, higher temperature fuel burn for cleaner emission, um, lower maintenance costs um, due to it better. Uh, the, uh, the fastest selling white body engine ever. It sold 1,100 units to 40 different customers and will be available in 2014 to replace the standard Trend 900 on the M380. Uh, from GE, we have the GE-1X. This engine will be mostly made out of carbon fiber. It will be 35% lighter than the, the standard one. Uh, the fan base will also be made of carbon fiber with a leading edge of titanium so they can uh, withstand incoming bird strikes and any other objects. Um, G says that it will also be 30% quieter than their standard version, and it's due to be released in 2015. In terms of prototypes for the future uh, from G, there's the LM6000, which is, um, at the moment, it's only a ground use uh, turbine engine to power uh, cities and stuff. Um, it has zero emissions when it's running on uh, natural gas. It's, it's too big to fill in an aircraft, so they're looking at in 2025 for the aircraft version. Um, and another prototype is the electric turbines. Uh, this is in partnership with EasyJet. It's already been created, but they can't use it because they don't have batteries big enough to hold the power that's required. Um, so, conclusion is... There we go. Um, alternative fuels we're looking at for the future, lighter materials. Uh, materials that can offer higher um, fuel burns for cleaner emissions, faster inspection turnarounds with more computer based, uh, updated softwares for engineers, lower maintenance, and lower costs. 